Dear Sebastian, dear all, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming to Berlin. And uh, Sebastian, thank you for introducing me. I have to disappoint you. Uh, you have uh, handed over to me this uh, fast processing award. Uh, this is uh, an unsuccessful attempt because I'm on a diet currently. Uh, so <laughs> so there, is no, there is no incentive for me to speak a little bit shorter than I would do. And the second point, and the second point, uh, you, you, introduced, you introduced me uh, in my capacity as, um, as a minister in the chancellor's office or as the chief of staff uh, to the chancellor's office uh, by saying that um, I probably would be uh, the CPU of the German government. Yes, indeed. Uh, I have many uh, colleagues and friends across the world uh, in other cities and capitals serving as CPUs, like Dennis McDonough in the White House, like uh, Ed Llewellyn in uh, London and Downing Street number 10, or uh, my good friend Jean-Pierre uh, in the Elysee Palace uh, in France. All of these um, CPUs are um, uh, different models. They are different uh, uh, in, um, in importance. They are different in functioning. They are different uh, in uh, what they are doing, what they can do. Uh, there are certainly CPUs in other countries much more important than me, but as far as I can see, uh, today uh, I'm staying in front of you and I'm perhaps not the most important one, not the fastest one, but I'm by far the biggest CPU uh, in, uh, in the government uh, that I have ever met uh, over the last uh, couple of years. Thank you, thank you so much for organizing this Congress. It is a Congress where most of the speakers, and uh, I was uh, so tremendously impressed by uh, what Professor uh, Greengard was uh, telling us. I was impressed because I didn't understand even a word of what he was telling you. And uh, I guess, I guess that most of the 75 speakers you have invited uh, would, uh, in my eyes and my ears, uh, uh, telling some uh, uh, terribly ununderstandable uh, uh, content. Uh, but the, the, uh, the, the interesting thing in all this is, Professor Greengard, that you are changing the world. And we, as politicians, we have to deal with what you are doing without understanding what you are doing, but we have to draw the right conclusions and uh, to decide on the uh, appropriate uh, uh, measures. And this is something that is of a enormous political importance. We as uh, politicians, we have to understand that the ongoing developments with regard to uh, digitization, um, what we call uh, Wirtschaft 4.0, uh, what we can see every day in our daily life. This is something that uh, will probably lead to the biggest ever transformation in our economies, but not only in our, not just in our economies, in our uh, social life, in our personal life, in our political life, in the way we are communicating, and the way we are working, and the way we are probably thinking. And it is something without precedent. When I found uh, uh, a book uh, published in 1900, a couple of years ago, I was stunned by the fact that most of the uh, revolutionary inventions, like, um, uh, like mobile phones, uh, TV, and others, were already uh, described in a book that was published uh, in 1903. But I have never found a book where the tremendous, where the tremendous uh, 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 effects of uh, Konrad Zuse's uh, uh, work and inventions uh, in the 40s have been described perhaps 20 years ago. And even in the 50s, uh, when we had already the first wave of digitiz digitization uh, in America, in Europe, and elsewhere, nobody could imagine that uh, only 50 years later, we would have uh, uh, smartphones where we would have 
the knowledge, the entire knowledge uh, of the world within our pockets and uh, where we could communicate around the world without uh, any problem at all. And even 30 years ago, when uh, my father um, has, um, has bought for me, I, I, I used to be a student, an electric typewriting machine uh, to facilitate my work at university. He said, well, this is a very expensive typewriter, but uh, you can use it for the rest of your life. Uh, <laughs> now, it is for 30 years uh, in, uh, 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 in, in, in some place in my house where I even forgot where it is. We have seen so tremendous changes, and it is just uh, the beginning and not the end. The changes we are facing are much bigger, and there are experts predicting that we will have an additional increase of productivity by about 40% within the next 20 years. That means we will lose probably 40% of the jobs in many areas, in some areas more and others less, and at the same time, we will see other jobs emerging and being created, but not necessarily in the same factories, not necessarily in the same places, and not necessarily in the same countries. That means the claims, once again, uh, are uh, 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 at stake. And Germany as a country, uh, very successful in the first and in the second industrial revolution, a country that has more industrial jobs uh, in Europe uh, than any other country compared to the population. We have still 20% of industrial jobs. Uh, such a country as Germany that has been very successful in car manufacturing, in machine manufacturing, in chemistry, in many other areas, is now facing a challenge that's perhaps bigger than the challenge after the end of the Second World War when the country was destroyed and we had to rebuild uh, by a large scale our uh, industrial capacities. And um, the second thesis uh, this afternoon is we as politicians, we cannot stop the process. We cannot uh, decide on the, um, on the direction of the process. It is a process that is inspired by technical developments. It is inspired by the um, by the dreams of the people, and that it is driven by an international community not confined by national borders uh, and, not, uh, and not under the control of national governments. If, for example, the American government would decide uh, to destroy Silicon Valley and to stop all the research and public funding of uh, digital uh, science, uh, it would perhaps have an effect for a couple of years in the United States, but it would never stop the ongoing process worldwide because researchers, scientists across the globe are thinking of, uh, about machine learning, are thinking about uh, care robots, are thinking about autonomous driving, are thinking about uh, machines connected with, with machines, about machines connected with human beings and everything that flows from these uh, 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 new uh, uh, structures and, uh, and new possibilities. And therefore, the question to us as politicians is, what can we do, what shall we do, what kind of options do we have? And um, the four theses uh, I would like to present to you this afternoon are first, it is about of awareness raising. It is about education, it is about regulation, and it is all about uh, political leadership, awareness rising. This is a revolution that has not been announced. It is invisible, but it's going on. We see, for example, the situation where companies like Google and others are contracting uh, researchers and scientists across the globe specialized in uh, autonomous driving and uh, machine learning. Machine learning has become uh, a uh, black box for us as politicians, but we have, underst we have understood that this is something that could even change the digital world much more than any other idea over the last couple of years. We are good in Germany in the traditional areas of the digital world. 
but now we have to adapt to new developments. And uh, everywhere in the world, in China, in the United States, in Japan, people are working very hard on digitization. Second, we will have to understand that uh, disruptive innovation, it means that uh, companies and, um, uh, and, uh, and people who were the owners of, uh, of a certain product will not be the owners of the next generation of a product because the world is changing. Disruptive innovation could, for example, have tremendous consequences for automobile industries, not just in Germany, in all countries worldwide. Are the next types of autonomous driving cars connected to the internet uh, produced by the traditional car manufacturers? Or will they be produced by companies like Google, uh, by uh, companies like Apple or others? Uh, what is the interconnection between e-mobility on the one hand and autonomous driving on the other hand? What will happen when people will no longer be in a need to buy and uh, uh, to possess their own individual car, but when car sharing and other models become possible because you can order an uh, aut autonomously driving car by your smartphone within a couple of minutes, and you have totally different environments in the big cities, and um, everything is uh, changing, and therefore we have to raise awareness. We have to send a message, not just to the big uh, industries, but we have to send the message to the medium-sized companies. We have to send the message to self-employed people across the country, uh, and this is what we are doing. We will have a uh, cabinet, special cabinet meeting by the end of May, 24th of May, where we will discuss um, uh, in uh, cooperation with the European Commission, in cooperation with outstanding and famous uh, uh, people, the uh, consequences of digitization to our um, uh, labor environment, uh, to our political environment, uh, to our industrial environment. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we will adapt our digital agenda to that, and we will try to, um, uh, to, to take the appropriate decision. One decision we will have to take uh, relates to education. When I'm talking to CEOs of um, worldwide uh, uh, successful companies in the field of digitization. They are all very positive about the labor force in Germany, about the skills of young German people with regard to software engineering, with regard uh, to computers, uh, to hardware, to software, and to others. But they are also sending the message to me that we will need not just the skills of the people already there, but if the process is continuing, as we all expect it to continue, then we will need four times, 10 times, 20 times, as many skilled people in this area uh, as we have seen so far. That means we have to adapt our system of education. We will have to produce more students uh, interested in um, these, uh, 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 in, in these sciences. We will have to encourage people to concentrate on programming of computers and um, research uh, in this field. This is why our next IT summit, uh, organized uh, in the city of uh, Saarbrücken, will uh, discuss and concentrate on the link between education and academic world on the one hand and the new developments on the other. We need more startups in Germany. And this is uh, where I would like to invite you to Berlin, also to Munich, to Cologne, and to other cities, but uh, especially Berlin. Uh, many, many young people are attracted by the charm of the city of Berlin. Uh, I've asked why. Uh, and one of these uh, uh, young people from the startup told me, well, you know, Mr. Altmaier, there are so many cities much more beautiful than Berlin, but most of them are museums from the past, where you can see all the big and impressive buildings from the past. Everything has been already decided and, and done for centuries. Berlin is a somehow chaotic city where you can see all the good and negative uh, stages of German history over the last 200 years, 
but it is a city that is open for the future. It is not yet a museum. It is not yet, uh, 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 nothing is achieved, nothing is uh, final, and uh, everything is open. Everything is open to young people uh, interested in changing the world. The third point, the third point um, is about regulation. Uh, if we want to compete, if we want to compete uh, in this new uh, stage of um, digitization, uh, we have to think about the appropriate uh, regulatory rules that we need to have a sufficient space for people developing new techniques. For example, autonomous driving. You can choose a cautious approach or you can choose a uh, encouraging approach. Um, I was yesterday night in a meeting of my coalition and somebody uh, raised the floor and said, well, I, I, I realized the, the new Google car uh, was involved in an accident with a lorry driver uh, in the United States. This is, this is a good example. We have to be cautious uh, and, we have to, and we have to restrict the use and the implementation of such techniques not yet ripe for implementation. And then my answer was, if we would have 150 years ago, when uh, the first uh, automobiles uh, were thriving uh, in Germany, if we would have applied such a, uh, uh, such a cautious approach in the moment where the first car accidents happened in the streets of Berlin in, 1800, uh, in 1880 or 1885, we would never we would never have uh, become the champion of traditional car manufacturing in Germany as it happened uh, over the last uh, 100 years. And the same applies, the same applies uh, to these uh, automatic drones. Uh, I see an enormous potential in using drones, uh, not just in Germany, but uh, in uh, developing countries, in uh, countries where we have mega cities, where we have a lot of pollution. And then you can replace dirty cars by very uh, ecologically healthy drones that will have enormous functions in, um, uh, in collecting information, in, uh, uh, in uh, serving, uh, in transporting things that will help us to save energy, to save uh, CO2, uh, and that will have an enormous uh, impact on our economies as well. In all these areas, when it is about cloud computing, when it is uh, about uh, storage uh, and processing of data, when it is about the use of big data, uh, when it is about autonomous driving, when it is uh, about uh, other new developments, we have to make a choice whether we want to be on the safe side of history uh, and risk to lose track, or whether we want to say, yes, we realize these techniques will be developed and we believe Germany has the skills and the possibilities and the, um, and the uh, capacities to be amongst the first countries worldwide to develop these new techniques. And uh, the third point is, it's a challenge not yet uh, for Germany, it, not just for Germany alone, it's a challenge for the entire world. And it's a challenge for Europe. And this is something that can be solved only by cooperation uh, and not by... Uh, uh, close borders uh, and by, um, by national egoism. And that means we have to uh, improve the capacity of the European Union. The European Commission next week uh, uh, will adopt uh, enormous, uh, the important uh, proposals for directives. Uh, with regard uh, to uh, digital uh, uh, issues, we have adopted a, a framework regulation uh, for data protection. We are negotiating with the Americans about uh, safe harbor provisions. All this is legal stuff. It is not of interest for you, but it is very much important to allow it for you to do your jobs, and we want you to do your jobs in Europe, uh, in Germany, and in Berlin, if uh, possible. And the last point um, I would uh, like to make in this uh, context is the uh, issue of leadership. The issue of leadership, that means that we have, even when people are reluctant, even when people are worried, even when people are afraid of new developments, it's uh, our obligation as political leaders to um, convince people uh, this is something 
that will perhaps change the world, but it will never change our values, it will never change uh, the way we are human beings, it will help us to be better and it will serve the human being. And this is the last point I would like to mention, uh, dear Sebastian Turner, uh, you told me uh, that most of the important researchers and uh, people in this field uh, have a migration background. I'm a refugee uh, this afternoon as well because I fled from the Chancellor's office uh, to your event center uh, in order to have some new insights and new ideas. And um, we have to realize that all these new techniques will bring us closer together in a global village. We have um, more and more the possibility to freely transport goods and services and capitals and information. And it would be an illusion if we would believe that just the humans and the people would stay in the place of their birth until they die. We will see a more, uh, a bigger amount of, um, of migration, a migration of uh, high-skilled workers, migration of refugees in civil wars. And by the end of all this, it is our obligation and our duty to organize the process in a way that we can uh, implement our humanitarian values. This was why we, have, um, uh, why we have accommodated almost one million people in Germany over the last year, fleeing civil war in Syria and Iraq. No, you can say, do what you want, but uh, uh, I, will, I, will finish, I will finish my last <laughs> sentence. The, uh, and this is why we believe that a safe environment is also important for you, because you need the best of the people worldwide. And you will get the best you need if we have a safe environment where people can develop and uh, uh, deploy their capacities, their skills. And um, I wish you all the best and uh, good success. And perhaps amongst this audience, there are one, two, three, four, five, ten Nobel Prize winners of the future. This is uh, what I wish uh, all of you. Thank you for your attention and have a good work this afternoon.